Welcome back to my channel, everybody. It's me, Leah. Welcome to my channel if you are new. I'm going to be sharing my breast reduction surgery during this video, so sit tight. This is a video that I have been talking about so frequently on my Instagram page. And this is something that is very personal to me, so I would love for everybody to tune into this video. Leave any comments, any questions that you feel like you would like to have answered. Um, that I maybe didn't answer in this video. And let's go ahead and jump into this video. So a little background on really trying to put this video into perspective and to put it in a very short form because there's a lot of information. There's so much time that is going to be squished into one video. This is a huge procedure that I have been wanting to have done for many, many years now. And I just decided, you know what, enough is enough. I'm tired of waiting. I work so very hard, like many of us do, just to pay my bills. And, and I think those that may have things that they are working towards or would like something a little change, whether it be cosmetic or whether it be, you know, building a house or purchasing a home or something like that, um, you understand that. For you to be able to actually um, obtain is a huge, huge, huge marker in your life, especially when it comes to having to spend a lot of money on it. So this is almost a month update. By the time I actually post this video, it probably is gonna be by the four week marker. So today is April 8th and my four weeks post-op will be April 10th, which is on Monday. So I'm gonna start this video off by answering some questions that I received on my Instagram and that I received on my YouTube channel and read those off the community tab. Someone asked, did your mom come to help you recover? Yes, actually both of my parents came down to help me through this surgery and uh, before, during, and after. So I'm extremely grateful that both of my parents were able to come down. My dad lives in Virginia Beach and my mom lives in Jacksonville, North Carolina. Someone asked what surgery did I have? So I had a breast reduction, breast lift, all that was basically included in the same procedure. That I did not know. I was not aware that they're somewhat the same procedure, but not. I rate the pain, the new size, the process, and what you had to do to get the surgery, etc. So, you guys, there was a very lengthy procedure into actually making sure that I chose the correct doctor that I felt like would best suit me for this procedure. Going through and um, emailing the coordinator, sometimes texting. The whole procedure and search kind of started last year. Unknowingly, I was browsing on Instagram, different plastic surgeons that would just pop up on my timeline because I was already following a little bit of them. Some of that were local, some were in like central United States and then some were on the West Coast. Obviously, when you start following those types of pages, just like with anything, they give you more of those people, suggested people you should follow. Mid-year, more towards the end of the year, I started taking it a little bit more seriously to find doctors that were local because there are so many plastic surgeons in South Florida. Let let me kind of take this a little bit more serious because this is something that I've been wanting for so long and so many doctors are doing BBL so many doctors are doing tummy tuck so many doctors are doing like lipo this whole thing so I was like that's not anything that I really really have ever been like oh I have to get this done it was always my breast it was always having a breast reduction and the thing that scared me most, and I think that kind of puts everybody on like, okay, this is going to be this, the healing process, is the scars. So I did get the, the lollipop with the anchor, basically the anchor scar. And that is typically the most common way to have a breast reduction and or lift. It was like around, it was like September, October. And then in November, I was like, okay, I'm going to put this deposit down. Um, I found the doctor. The doctor just popped up on my Instagram page as I was scrolling. And I believe I either seen a BBL or I seen a breast reduction. I think it was the breast reduction that caught me by surprise because I was so always seeing, you know, the doctors that were performing the body procedures versus the breast. And if they were performing breast, it was more so like an augmentation which I definitely had no interest in getting because I don't need these babies bigger. I needed them to be much smaller. Fast forward, I put a $250 deposit down. 
Um, I knew that I was going to finance my procedure because just having that lump sum of monies being spent out, it was a little bit out of my comfort zone. And I was like, you know what? I'd rather just kind of have this financed and then pay it off and, you know, kind of work on my credit at the same time and, you know, just do it like that. There are so many different tests that you have to go through to get any type of cosmetic procedure being done. So you have to go get labs. Depending on your plastic surgeon depends on what they require. Everybody is different. So you have to go see your primary care physician and basically complete all the labs or you have to you know have to go to maybe different places if they don't perform the labs in-house maybe you have to go to like a quest diagnostic center and have all the labs done there have the year analysis of anything if you take any recreational drugs or you smoke or drink you do have to completely stop doing that as soon as possible depending on how soon you want to have your procedure done i casually drink so that was the only thing that had stopped doing and that wasn't hard like that's not hard at all because it, it just wasn't thank goodness i got all that stuff done with a breast procedure you do have to get an ultrasound some doctors may require a mammogram it just depends i believe that's it you get a physical make sure you're good you i'm pretty sure somewhere in there they're doing some type of mental physical too just to make sure that you're not doing this because you're depressed or something like that. Like, oh, I think this is gonna help me with, you know, none of that. You can't even play that card because they're gonna be like, okay, maybe you're not like, you know, depending on the doctor, depending if they're a money hungry doctor or if they really care about their patient, depends on how that whole procedure may be handled. The pain. The pain, honestly, was like a one. Even the day of my procedure, even when I was in the car, there was actually no pain because unlike having a breast augmentation where i've heard with so many different people where they felt like it was just tons and tons and tons of pressure and i believe that's because it's a foreign object being put in your body and it's it's your skin is stretched it's just tight and so your body has to get used to these new implants so with the breast reduction lift you don't have anything being put in you just literally have everything being you know the size decreasing and then it being pulled tight and sewn back together. Now the pressure on the skin is different feeling like it was very tight in some areas. It still very much is because you literally shrink your boobs and then they tighten the skin and pulled it back together. So yes, it's gonna be extremely tight. That's what we want. We don't want loose skin. <laughs> like, that's the whole purpose of having this procedure done as well. It was just making sure that you're not doing too much. It didn't hurt to lift my arms. Like I didn't have any of that discomfort that I was researching so heavily on. I did take my pain medication for four days. I could have stopped on that third day but the fourth day i just took it for four days just to be safe and to make sure i was resting because if not then you're kind of like moving a little too soon and doing a little too much or thinking you could do a little bit too much i was just resting taking it easy my parents were still here they were cooking cleaning doing everything for me so i was just taking it easy and sleeping that's what your body needs right after surgery you need to be able to rest and heal properly okay so this is the thing the new size everybody wants to know what size are you now what size were you so when i was this is a little backstory when i was around the age of six, 15 16 i had a cyst removed from my left breast and if you have ever seen any videos where I was maybe in a bathing suit or a low cut top or anything like that, there is a dark scar in the inside, like closer to the inside outside of my breast. And it was from that cyst being removed. So it made my breast, as I was growing and still developing, it made my boobs like two different sizes. Not knowing or really like analyzing the fact that they weren't like you know you weren't you don't i wasn't thinking that they were the actually two different cup sizes i just knew one was bigger than the other but i never thought so hard all these years to the point that they were actually two different cup sizes like two different bra sizes so when i went in for my consultation and we did we were talking about everything he was you know doing everything doing the measurements he was like yeah your, your breasts are like two different cup sizes for real so his main focus was going to be on making sure that they were symmetrical as possible. And I was like, oh my God, 
my breasts are like two different sizes. Like this is crazy. My my bra size, what I always was like familiar with was the fact that my breast, my bra size was a triple D, a 34 triple D. And he was like, yeah, your smaller breast is a triple D. In certain places, they may just label it as an E. Some places, depending on what country you're in or where you shop from, they actually don't have a triple D on the breast cup size. It goes right to E. He was like, yeah, this smaller one may be a triple D or E, but your larger breast, the one that did not have the surgery on it, is bigger than that. And I was like, <laughs> what? Like, it was really so crazy to me because I hadn't really, I don't know why, I just never thought about that. I didn't really realize it until I was talking with the doctor. I don't know what size the breast that was not cut, but now I told the doctor that I wanted to be a C. I think he made them as small as it would fit toward my to my body frame because I'm not like a small woman. Um, but I'm not a large person either. But I still won't really know until like three months post-op because of, you know, swelling, because of the, the tissue, like the scars still have to go, or not one, I don't say go down, but they have to still heal. And so yeah, what made you decide to have this procedure? So this is something that I, like I said, I always wanted to have. I ran track in middle school and high school, and I was very much aware that my breasts were much larger than I would like them to have been, especially run doing track and field. I never thought that in my younger years it was something that I can ever financially afford, especially being that, you know, you do need so much downtime. So I was like, oh my goodness. I remember when I was in my early 20s, maybe like 2021, I went to a plastic surgeon in Ballantyne, North Carolina just to get a consultation and he told me that the breast reduction procedure for him started around like 13,000 and I was like 13? Oh heavens like no I, I, I'm, in my mind I thought I would never be able to afford this and then I came down to sunny South Florida where there's a dime a dozen amazing plastic surgeons and the price was essentially like half of the price in like almost 10 years later so i'm like wow for that to be a huge price difference i was like oh i could definitely afford this and i'm in the um you know in the space now to be able to take the time off my parents are also in the space now to be able to have come down here for I think a week or a little longer than a week. I was just very so, 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 so fortunate to be able to do this. <sighs> I'm just so happy. So I've always wanted this done. When I was around 18, 19 years old, maybe even like 19, 20, um, closer to that consultation age, I was so vocal about wanting to have this procedure done to the women in my family. And they were like, at least wait until you have one child, wait some more years, just wait, just wait. And since having the procedure done, I really wish I would have got it even sooner. I understand where they're coming from, but at the same time, like life waits on no one. And if you want something done, you, you thought rationally upon your decision. In my case, I don't have any children. I don't plan on having any children within the next I would say two to three years. I've waited long enough. I turned 30 this summer and this was my 30th gift to myself. I knew that I wanted to be healed around my birthday month, which is July. This is not coming out of anybody's pocket but mine. I'm in a space where I'm just gonna go for it. Life is short and I'm tired of feeling like I'm not feeling why I work so hard. Uh, was your breast reduction something you saved up for or did you get help from your insurance? So I did not go the insurance route. I have done so much research on how to get your insurance to pay for a procedure like this, or even if you have insurance that will cover a cosmetic procedure. I've asked so many people, I've seen so many stories on social media, especially TikTok. I just decided to not go through the insurance because I didn't want to feel like, once I came to the decision that this was gonna happen, I was like, oh, I'm in full control with the help of God and God is really in control. I didn't even think or consider to go through my health insurance because I didn't want any setbacks. I didn't want them to, you know, be arguing like, oh, we're not going to do this. She needs to wait. She hasn't had kids, you know, all these different things. 
And so I didn't go through my health insurance. I just decided to finance it. I'm basically gonna, you know, be paying it back, like on a credit card. Let's get to these YouTube questions. Someone commented up here that this was the best decision that they ever made. Speedy and safe recovery, sis. Your back and overall posture is going to feel so much better. That is the most weird, like, thank you so much for this comment. But mentioning the posture, oh my goodness. I think because I was so used to having breasts that were so big, I even still find myself slouching over and I'm trying so hard to correct my posture and sit up straight. And even for a better recovery um, while I'm still healing. And it's the strangest thing how I'm just like always so slouched over because I was so used to it. But now I'm just like sit up straight and even try to like look a little bit more together honestly i never struggled with back pain my posture sucked i was never that person that struggled with back pain i did have the indentations of bra straps which really really suck especially continuously over years and years and years and years it can um create pigmentation issues i don't think i ever really had that especially like just because I, if i could i would definitely go braless but it was just a struggle with sports bras with shopping with different attire you know you want to look a certain way without feeling super exposed or overexposed but yes i'm still working on my posture just to remember to straighten up sit up straight and you know it's very very foreign to me and it sucks but I'm gonna keep working on it. There was a lot of comments with just people um, wishing me a speedy and healthy and smooth recovery and I really, really thank y'all for that. What are you looking forward to now that you uh, that you have the breast reduction? Oh, <laughs> that is a good question. I am looking forward to shopping, shopping and working out. Whew. Your girl has had to take a long ass break, I think in, in all, it would be around two and a half, maybe three months total that I haven't been able to work out. I was so busy with work before the surgery and then now resting and healing. Trying to wrap up healing. It was, um, it's, it's been a very, very uh, interesting time forcing myself to relax and not be able to move so much or move as quick as I'm used to. Cause it's not like I'm old, I'm nowhere near old but you do have to mentally train yourself and physically train yourself to slow down. Even being in the shower, I'm just so very conscious of how I'm moving. If I turn, picking up my feet, making sure that I don't lose my balance because I just have the craziest things run through my mind if I was to ever, you know, slip or fall the wrong way or trip myself or something, even with Oreo and coming up the stairs and going down the stairs or just walking him in general. I'm just so very conscious of every movement that I make. And uh, you just have to be because you want to be very careful during this time, even with hugging people or just being out in public. You want to be very, very cautious of people being too close to you or even driving and all these different things that you take for granted when you're like well you know and and and, and so whoo i'm just like whoo this is a time it is going to take some time and it, i'm okay with that what was the cost or was it covered by your insurance how do you feel emotionally and physically that is a very 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 important question so first now i know this is going to be a question that everybody wants to know and i don't hold back any information so being that i financed the surgery the surgery is one thousand dollars more the total was around sixty five hundred dollars this price does not include your labs this price does not include your post prescriptions this price does not include your surgical bra that you have to purchase the day before surgery my lab were whatever they cost felt like some days i had to pay for something some days i didn't have to pay for something it was weird my whole situation was a very long process that i may have to get into in another video this may be a part one and then the part two i'll go 
in and explain my whole ordeal that I had to go through. It's not a cheap procedure to have done. Of course, you can go out of the country to have different things done, but then you have to also accommodate your travel expenses. Everything in total was probably around $8,000. $6,500 was finance. That was the actual surgery cost but you do have to possibly consider other medical expenses that may occur that you have no clue that may occur. How do I feel physically and emotionally? Physically, I'm beginning to feel a little bit more normal. I don't wanna say like myself because this is a new body. Emotionally, I feel happy as hell. Like your girl is ready to go outside, okay? Like I have not been in a public night life setting in a month and a half almost probably more than that actually i have taken off my compression socks still figuring out this sleep thing i'm still sleeping elevated on my back because i'm still not able to sleep completely flat and i don't think that i'll be comfortable doing that just yet it's still different because i still have to be careful how i'm getting into bed how i get out of bed some nights I am very uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable sleeping on your butt. Like the first two weeks, my butt hurt so bad because I was sleeping literally in the same position with minimal movement throughout the night. Put me in the mindset of understanding how older people or just ill people get bed sores if they're sleeping in the same position because my tailbone hurt so bad. It felt like, like I fell on it or something. It made me want to get up and walk more. So I was walking the day I had surgery. You're supposed to like every hour if you're not asleep. It just makes you want to move more because my butt was hurting. There's some nights where I want to sleep on my side so bad, but then I feel like the pressure on like my sides of my breast, which is extremely worrisome because I'm like, uh, okay, not yet. Like mm -mm, we not ready for that yet. So I kind of reposition myself with pillows under my arms so I can like kind of like feel snug and comfortable. Physically, I'm, I'm getting back together. I'm ready to go to the gym and start with some walking, some faster speed walking, maybe a little incline, maybe some stair steppers. No hard cardio yet, no weights, none of that yet until about six to eight weeks so i still have some time to go with that that's like literally two to four more weeks which i'm perfectly fine with i don't want anything that can stretch my incisions i'm trying to be patient as possible because i really want my scars to heal beautifully being with some melanin in us some of us more than others are just very prone to hyperpigmentation. Today was my first day actually putting sunscreen on my scars. Even though they aren't exposed to the sun, I don't care, I'm putting sunscreen on them. Today was also my first day putting some vitamin C serum on my scars. Right now, the actual line down, a little my skin tone, a little bit more on the red side, and then underneath is a little bit more browner. So I'm like, okay, let me do what I do. This is what I do best. So let me go ahead and start now. My incisions are fully closed. It's go time for me to start with, you know, the scar healing process and making sure my pigmentation is limited, little to no pigmentation at all. I'm excited, so excited about this healing process, getting back to working out, doing what I do, even with work getting back to feeling normal and not so fatigued or not feeling uncomfortable with working with my clients. And that is the update, you guys. Now, as far as this other portion on this paper, this is gonna be in another video because this video is more than lengthy enough. If you have any questions that I did not answer, please leave them in the comments. I'm gonna be sure to answer them in the part two to this video. And I wanna thank you so much for waiting patiently for this video because I was supposed to post this like two weeks ago. And uh, finally, finally pushed myself to go ahead and knock this out. So thank y'all so much. Make sure you follow me on Instagram on my Leah Lee page. That is where I give all my daily, every other day updates. I post those on my story. So make sure you follow me there and I will see y'all later. Oh my God. <laughs>